welcome to the introduction for lesson four, which deals with uh, space exploration and space technology. Now, your textbook spends a lot of time talking about space exploration, space stations, the MIR, how we get up there, how satellites work. But there's more to technology from space than just launching uh, men up into space. Of course, that's of course a very noble thing, and uh, I don't think anyone really would pass up an opportunity to take a, a trip on a spaceship and look at the Earth from deep space. And we've, we've sent explorers and satellites to other planets to look around. Uh, you know, we have one that uh, we've sent to Mars. We've, we've sent them off towards the sun, probes to the sun, to find out more about uh, our universe and what that relationship this planet has with the rest. But there's some things about space exploration that lead to technologies that, that make a difference for us as people living here on this planet Earth. Um, there's technology that, that our society has gained. And uh, let me tell you about a brother in law of mine who's now deceased. Les used to work for Bendix Corporation in Ann Arbor. And that's Ann Arbor, Michigan. I would think everybody would know that, but just in case. And while Les worked there, uh, I went out to visit him and have lunch one day, and he took me into the lab. Uh, he was in charge of a group that was working on a system to deploy a seismograph that they that the first moonwalkers were going to leave on the moon to see if there were earthquakes on the moon. And for that reason, he had a space suit because he had to make sure that all this could be used in a space suit, as, as the picture uh, showed. Now, Les took me down to one of their research areas, and he showed me this little box, the oh, size of a not much bigger than a really small microwave, an area there. And he said, you know what we're going to do with that? He said, we got to fit a computer in there. Everything had to be miniaturized when we sent people off into space. And because it had to be miniaturized, technologies were gained out of the space program that we've come to use today. For example, laptop computers, the iPad. These were all things that were developed because we discovered the technology to create smaller units. Now, when we think of the space program, I, you know, we used to joke that Tang was something that came from the space program. I don't even know if they make Tang anymore. They talked about Velcro coming from the space program. Velcro was, I think, invented in Germany in the 40s. It was used in the space program because they had to hold things down so they would Velcro them. And because they discovered ways to use Velcro, we now have new uses for Velcro today. Another thing is Teflon. Teflon had been around, but they discovered that they could use Teflon to make surfaces smoother. So those really weren't technologies that came from the space program, but instead were technologies that the space program gave us new ways to use. But there have been some very, very good developments of technology that are a direct result of the space program. LEDs, those little light bulbs that we have in flashlights, and, and now you can get them in spotlights, uh, you can get them in car lights. The reason they use LEDs is they don't generate heat. And one of the problems they had in spaceships, they had these small areas, they could not afford to generate a lot of heat that a light bulb would use. So they came up with LEDs. And those have now been passed on to the rest of society, an invention that came from the space program. Infrared ear thermometers. Ever gone to the doctor now and they take your temperature with an infrared thermometer, measures the heat coming off the eardrum. Those were used in the space program to measure the heat from stars that were thousands, millions of miles away. That was a technology that we've, that we've incorporated into our society. Firefighting equipment, new uh, uniforms that firefighters can use to protect them from 
fires and keep them cooler in, in hot situations. These are the kinds of things that came from the space program because when you're in space it's pretty chilly I'm told. So they had to find some way of making a spacesuit that would keep people warm when it was cold out and cooler when it was hot out. So that's we got those. Smoke detectors. The adjustable smoke detector. You know you wouldn't want to be in a space capsule and, and have a fire. They needed very, very sensitive smoke detectors. That's what we have in our homes today. They're much better than the original smoke detectors. They can detect smoke much sooner and saves many more lives. Temper foam. You know, those Tempur-Pedic mattresses with those foams. Those were developed through the space program because they needed something in those space suits that would be form-fitting and, and, and be tight to the men who wore them. Enriched baby food. Now, who would have ever have thought that baby food would have improved by the space program? But because they're sending people into space, they can't send a large restaurant with them. They have to send food that's freeze-dried or prepared. And so they were able to use enriching enrichments in the, that food so they could survive. And those enrichments have now found their way not only into baby food, but into uh, foods and drinks for older people who need high protein. Um, cordless drills. The dust buster. First dust buster was used in space because they needed to vacuum out all those things that were floating around. And rumor has it they just couldn't find an extension cord that would reach from Earth to the space station or the space uh, vehicle. So they had to develop, develop batteries that would allow these things to work and that could be rechargeable. Hence, cordless vacs, cordless drills, cordless saws. All of those things that we have now that are cordless are the direct result of technology that was developed through the space program. Water purification. When you're in space, again, there's no lake where you can draw water. So they had to find a way to take the water that they had and purify it. Now some of that water was excreted from people. That's what they had to use to purify and drink. So those water purification systems that we have, many people keep them in their refrigerator. You fill a jug, that water filters through. Of course, not the same system that they used in space, but these are also used in cities and other municipalities to provide safe drinking water. So as we go through this section, through this lesson, what I'd like you to do is see if you can find online for a Digo post those things that are important developments from the space program that we are now using every day. And, and hopefully you'll discover more than just about satellites and geosynchronous orbits and space stations, but you'll see some of the most important developments that we have today are a direct result of our space program. So until our next video, let me say live long and prosper.